What is going on guys? This is Daniel and let's kick off the new year with a new observation video as I have a little bit of time to make a video during my school break. Today we're going to be looking at some things that caught my eye while I was watching the Utah Jazz. They're going to make the playoffs so I thought why not let's take a look at a team that doesn't get enough media attention. Let's get to it. In early offense, the Jazz like to swing the ball across and have the trailing big man then set a pin down for the wing in the corner. And here, coming off the screen, Hood is denied the ball, so Lyles flashes to the ball and Hood cuts back door. This is good basketball. Here, Hood isn't open, but then they nicely flow into a nice pick and roll on top, and Shelvin Mack can dish two favors for the open jumper. Now usually, the man coming off the down screen will be open, no problem. So here when Exum comes off the down screen, the Jazz can execute one of a few options. And here what they'll do is simply flow right into a high pick and roll. And when the Knicks switch this, Favors has a guard on him, he seals inside, and finishes with the layup. So they'll bring the ball up and go into motion, and here instead of the high pick and roll, they'll set up a double screen for Joe Ingles, and he comes off of it and gets an open three and is fouled. Here, after motion, they'll get it to the high post and execute a split, where Hayward will get a screen from Hood. And what Hood should really do here is, after setting the screen, slip hard to the basket looking for a backdoor layup. This would work well. He doesn't here, and Hayward turns it over on the drive. Another thing they'll go to in early offense is the strong side handoff with a double staggered screen for a wing, and here it works well as Jingle and Joe gets an open three and nails it. It happens so quick the defense may make a mistake, and here on the handoff, Mack can turn the corner and get a floater inside. Utah also starts offensive possessions with a simple pin down for Hayward, and here it can come off the screen, curl it, and draw a foul inside. This is a nice way to get it to your best offensive player early in the shot clock. On this play, the Knicks will switch the pin down, and so now Favors has a guard on him, and Utah correctly recognizes this and tries to post Favors up, and it works well as he takes advantage of the smaller defender. A play that the Jazz don't run enough is the Diao Gobert pick and roll. Diao is an excellent passer, and what happens is, even if the defense switches the screen, Gobert can seal the smaller defender inside and receive the pass, and here it works well. I'm not a fan of this set where Hood will get a double screen to get the ball 35 feet away from the basket just to get a high pick and roll, and by the time the screen is set, 12 seconds are already gone, and on this particular play, Mack ends up turning it over. I first saw the Jazz run this play on YouTube a year ago, and I thought it was subpar, but then they ran it against the Knicks. And it's actually a decent play. What happens is Hayward sets a back screen for Hill, and then he'll come up to receive the handoff. And here, Hayward gets a wide open three because of it. So I'm thinking, okay, solid play. And here Hayward gets the handoff and drives and gets fouled. But then this happens, so they run the play, and when Hayward comes up to receive the handoff, here they're actually setting up the hammer screen on the weak side to get Rodney Hood an open look at three. Wow, now I really like this play. Moving on, and the Jazz run some nice action for Lyles. Here it looks like Ingles is going to receive a double screen, but in fact, he and Gobert are setting a double screen for Lyles, who hits an open three. Different set, similar action as watch Ingles. He'll come off the double screen and then immediately come back around to help set the screen for Lyles. This is a very simple play, but it can be very effective. It's a guard to guard pick and pop, so here Johnson will set a screen for Hayward, and then Hayward finds Johnson, and they get a dunk out of this very simple play. This time, George Hill is the ball handler, and he can drive to the rim and hit a high arcing floater. The best way to defend this play is just to switch the screen, but the Knicks are being so stubborn here by not switching, and Hayward gets an easy pull-up jumper. Finally, the Knicks switch, and shockingly, it works as the offense stalls, Utah tries to isolate Hayward, and on this play, he turns it over. The Bulls switch, and this play is really not effective when the defense is smart and switches, 
and on this play, Utah can't even get a shot off. I've analyzed this play in the past, and it's one of my favorite plays, and the Jazz run it quite often, which is great. What it is is pretty simple. Hayward will set a ball screen, and then receive a flare screen, and here he gets a wide open three. Why does it work so well? Butler is going to show on the initial ball screen, and this gives Hayward a head start, and Lopez is not going to want to get all the way out to the three-point line, and this leaves Hayward open for the catch-and-shoot three. You can adequately defend this play if you ace the switches and if everyone is on the same page, but that's harder than it sounds. And this time Lyles is in Hayward's spot as he receives the flare screen, and this time he drives to the basket and draws a foul. And even when Ingles does not have the catch and shoot 3 here, they nicely flow into a quick pick and roll, and on the kickout pass, Hood can drive and get a short jumper. This time Lopez does get out there to switch onto Hayward, and now the Bulls rim protector is away from the rim, so Hayward swings it to Lyles, and Lyles can drive with no rim protection. And notice here how the Bulls are so concerned with Hayward that they leave Mack, who drives in for the floater. Now, this is how you do not run this play, as first Mac makes zero contact on the screen. If he even sets a decent screen, Hood may be able to turn the corner. And then here the Knicks will trap Mac, and this is a good thing. All Lyles has to do is wait for the pass, and Utah has a 4 on 3. Instead, he literally runs away from Mac, leaving him stranded, and Mac turns it over. Really, really bad. One of Diaz's go-to moves is to spin toward the baseline to get a reverse layup, and this is quite a nice move which he uses very frequently, and it works really well. His strength is important, but the quickness as which he makes this spin makes this move work. Now the way to stop it is simply to sit on that move. Don't let him spin baseline, and that's what Patrick Patterson does here, not letting him spin, forcing him middle, which results in a much tougher shot. Here it's Draymond Green who defends this move nicely, and the Warriors force a turnover. And this is a great way to utilize Diao's spin move as well as his passing. Here when he spins, notice how they'll set up the hammer play for Joe Johnson as he gets an open corner 3. And it's nice to see Lyles using this move as well. We have to talk about it. The poor spacing when Favors and Gobert share the floor is just so obvious. Here Favors has a nice roll to the basket, but Gobert's man can come over and rotate easily to force the difficult shot. With Lyles instead of Favors, notice how the Jazz can run a pick and roll with Gobert rolling to the basket and three shooters spacing the floor, and this is just more effective. The difference can be subtle, and here the Jazz push the pace a bit, and the matchups are switched. The Raptors center Nugera will have to guard Lyles, and most people may think a center guarding a power forward not a big deal, and it wouldn't be if Favors was in there, but it is for the Raptors now as Nugera can't cover out to the three point line, and Lyles gets an open three. And those nice actions I showed you earlier with Lyles don't work well with Favors. Here they'll set a pin down for Favors, and if this was Lyles it'd be an open 3, but with Favors it's a less efficient long 2. But Favors is a good player, he's an excellent interior scorer, and he crashes the boards well, and while I haven't really looked into his defense much, he has a good reputation there. So you can see the pros and cons are tough to deal with, but the spacing issue is something the Jazz need to look at very carefully going forward. Well, thanks for watching. Part 2 on the defense will be coming out in a day or two. So, see you next time.